Tights and tight twos. That's right. And I'll try not to move too much. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. One second. My two favorite Brian De Palma films are Scarface and The Untouchables, and I got them both on laser, and I watch them frequently. Did I pick two good ones? You certainly did. You must also like kind of gangster melodramas. <laughs> I just think they're great films, and, I, and they lend themselves to being able to be seen multiple times. Now, some movies don't, yeah. and I don't know why that is. <laughs> some you don't even want to see one time. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, I mean, I know they're all like your children in some way, form or fashion, but do you have movies that you prefer or that you thought really turned out as well? Well, it kind of changes as you change. I mean, some you sort of really like when you made them, and then years later they seem maybe a little dated, maybe they're not as exciting as you thought they were at the time, and others that you sort of weren't so excited about, you suddenly realized there were some really interesting things that you hadn't exactly worked out and noticed before. You probably look at them as how hard the shoot was and how hard the edit was and the no, whole... Oh, well, but the important thing is to get away from that, ultimately, and just as you're sitting in your easy chair deciding, well, what am I going to look at tonight? And it's if you pick out one of your own movies, that's a rare occasion. Now, some of these directors are having to go back and pull things out of the vault. They do director's cuts. Right. Would that be painful for you to go back and say, you know, pick some movie you did 15, 20 years ago and re-edit it? Or add I, things to I, it? I see no reason to do that, basically, because what's up there is what you decided to make at that time frame and there are very seldom are there examples where you think well maybe I would have changed that and maybe I should have used that scene or maybe I shouldn't have cut that out that doesn't happen too often to me when you get a movie script you say okay mm -hmm. and you shoot the movie in your head probably and run through it say this is how I'm going to do it I think I can do this how much does it change depending on who you get to star in it and what they can contribute or what they can't contribute to a film Again, it very much depends on the material. I mean, uh, Scarface is more or less the same in terms of how Oliver conceived the material. Of course, Al brought his own, you know, talent to it. Uh, uh, and Untouchables, you know, you're dealing again with very well worked out scenarios. Mm -hmm. One written by uh, Oliver Stone, one written by David Mamet. So you don't really play around with the material too much. Like with this movie, now, Nick Cage. He's got a lot of things he can do, and I'm not, you know, it's the first time you'd worked with him, right? When you get there and you start seeing these guys in the viewfinder, say, hmm, and you let them do a little more or let them do a little less, depending on, you know, who they yeah, are. Yeah, always with uh, really fine actors, you give them as much uh, uh, space to work in as possible. <clears throat> Especially when you're shooting things in long takes, you try to let them sort of, you know, you set the limitations and what's got to be said. It's a mystery. There's certain facts that have to be conveyed to the audience. But you, in order to give the spontaneity to it, you've got to let them sort of come up with the kind of rhythm and lines sometimes that make the material really work. I mean, lines like, uh, you know, don't be Jimmy Cricket, you know, doing that Jimmy mm -hmm. Cricket thing with me. You know, that's Nick's line. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you, uh, what are you, my conscience? I mean, you know. Do you ever find if they have really strong personalities and you have a strong personality and you have a vision, they have a vision, you're ultimately going to win. But do you ever let them talk you into doing things sometimes that you might not want to do later? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, Gary was having a, little, a hard time with the ending I had with the wave. He's getting, well, what, what, what happens? The thing just squashes me? I mean, is that what happened? You know, he didn't feel that that worked for him as a character. And uh, I was said, well, you know, it's a force of nature. You're living in a corrupt universe. I had all these kind of intellectual reasons. But in reality, Gary was right. It wasn't effective. It doesn't, it is not really, it doesn't really work. And until Gary found, until we came up with material that made Gary, actors don't always know the solution, but they can sure tell you when something's not working. Mm. And that's your job to find the solution, right? Absolutely. All right. Nice seeing you again. Right Thank on. You. Bye bye. Yeah, I can see. I, I can. Oh, I know. It's like dealing.